All right, time to get some work done. Whew. It's taking cold in here. Too cold to work, but oh well, I get some work done. Anyway, it's late in the day. I've been on dealing with the computer and parts orders all day long. So time to get a little bit of work done. Plus I'm freezing my ass off. So uh, the 61 Sportster here, we gotta do the cylinders on this. We need to bore them out. I'm gonna have to heat these up with a torch to get the pins out, but I gotta measure the pistons before I do that. So I can know what to hold the cylinder out to. Or bore it out first. So right now everything's in here is frozen, so temperature are all the same. Time to measure at that time. Otherwise you lose all your accuracy. This sweater is not thick enough. Yeah, my chrometer's a little screwing with me. It doesn't want to move. Yeah. Frozen up. Gotta get the grease in there working again. There we go. Now it works. Okay, it's supposed to be 20 over. So it looks like with this piston at 20 over would give us three and a quarter thou clearance. If you read the mic, it's at 15 or was it 16 and three quarter? 20 would be 20 over and three inch bore. Okay, so. So I'm gonna punch the. Uh, I'm gonna bore the cylinder to 15. That theoretically will leave a little over five thou to hone out. Double check my numbers. Yeah, about five and a quarter. Probably the air on the big side and or I mean on the small side and big side. Let's see if this piston's any different. These are notorious for being different. These ones are pretty close. Hmm, surprisingly. Usually these things vary all over the place. Got good taper in it. Uh, yep. You want to have some taper in the pistons, otherwise they'll stick. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. I'm shocked. These are way the hell off. Okay, so we're going to do this at 15. Oh. Uh, these are about the same. So I'm getting uh, just over zero. Let's see what these mics compare to each other. Um, these cylinders are not standard. These pistons are too small. Somebody read a mic wrong. Okay. Yeah. These are 23 thou oversized. Right now, and they're rusty. Which means these are not going to clean anywhere near. We thought they were going to clean. Wonderful. That means we need bigger pistons. A lot bigger. 30 I don't think will clean. 40 would be lucky to clean. So we need some 40 over pistons. That's a long ways from where I thought we were going to be. Oh well, so now you read a mic wrong. When you're off by one line it's 25 thou air. Guess what? You got a 25 thou air. <sighs> Wonderful. So I wonder what it's going to take to actually clean these. Yeah, we're 23 and a half. So 23 and a half that oversize. All right. Let me come with some pistons. All right. We've already been down the road with that video. We'll go go hunting in the back for some pistons. We'll be back. Okay, back again. All right, I got a whole slew of pistons here. So, customer gets to decide what he wants. 
Okay, I found a set of Ford um, 30 over, which ain't a chance in hell they're going to claim. Unless I hone them. And there ain't no way those marks are going to come out by honing. Not only 7,000. I'd be shocked if those came out at 7,000. I've been shocked before though, so you never know, but those are pretty damn deep. I don't think they're going to clean that 7 thou. That's assuming that these pistons are 7 thou. Big enough. So these are MC supply pistons. They're around back in the 70s. Early 70s. These are TRW. They came by later on. So, see how that has a higher compression to it because it's thicker dome. It looks like they're about the same height. This one's a boat anchor. This one's a lot lighter. TRWs are really thick. See how thick they are? MCs are thin. See how thin they are? They look like a cast piston. Nice and thin. So, that's your differences. So, these ones here were a little bit better quality in TRW. So, Back in the day they were anyway. Now they got a lot better stuff out there. So anyway, I don't think these are clean, but we're gonna measure these and find out. Let's see what we got here. Then we'll move on to the other options. Okay, this one here was down there around 17 or something, I think. 16 and three quarter. Yep. Let's see what this one is. Yeah, this one's bigger. That's a good sign. This one is at three. It's got a good taper on it. That's good. So I get a little extra honey now. I get an extra thou. Okay, so that would be. This one's at 23 right now. Which, as I recall, is what this was at, wasn't it? Oh, that's a 23. This is five thou up. Okay, so this is five thou bigger. what the cylinder is. That's got a lot of tape right at the very tip. Jeez. And you still got to put clearance in there. So we have a good eight thou we're going to clean out. Which is all on the good side. But same deal. I don't think this thing is going to clean. These big gouges in there with only Basically a ten thou bigger bore. We're only gonna be kind of about eight to nine though. Because these are worn. Let's see. But you never know, but that's some pretty heavy pitting in there. Pretty damn heavy. So I'm pretty sure that that ain't gonna happen. Okay, so that's what this one was. So we're striking out on these ones. So I can hone them out and run them. Maybe all right, but he won't be 100% clean. The customer did want 100% clean cylinder, so he didn't like my idea of uh, leaving a little bit of pitting above the top ring rim. So the problem is you never know what these are going to be until you actually cut them. This is the worst cylinder. So I can bore it and see what happens, but I can't bore it all out because I have to leave honing. Yeah. So if I wanted to attempt to do this, I'd have to just start honing. Like I said, I don't think there's any way that's going to clean. So. Screw it. I'm going to go bigger. Okay, so next option is we have CCI pistons. Premium brand, which is OE quality, and they work actually pretty good. So, 
That's a nice, good cast piston. It's got a decent sized dome on it. That's good. Okay, these are genuine Harley. These are 58 A's. These are made for small headed valve motor. 70, they had the big valve head. I had some of those too, but he liked the small one. These ones have chrome rings with expanded style one piece oil ring. Yep, these are good rings. Yeah. So there's the piston. Got some light corrosion on it being in the box. Who knows how many years? But at least 50. Box. Oh no, these are AMF. Take that back. They're only 40 years old. Ah. Blue. Blue. Yo. Shoot. Mm hmm. This is one thousand smaller. Ah, interrupted there with a phone call. Whew. Okay, uh, let's see. The stock Harley piston is one thousand bigger than the CCI piston. So if I bore the cylinder for the smaller piston, I can always put the, the Harley piston there if he wants to. So now the difference in how they're made is not much. Okay, we can see both damn light. So you can see how there's similar designs on how pistons are made because they're casted. There's only certain ways you can cast pistons. So you know if you make a decent piston, if you make a crappy one, you can do them all kinds of weird ways. So so basically they copy how Harley made their piston originally. So that's why it's an OEM design. They copied OEM design. So there you go. This has like a zinc type break-in coating on these pistons of some type. And that's what you're seeing the corrosion from. It doesn't do any damage, it just this is there. Whenever you got something that's old, it's like that. So these are from the early 70s. And so that's uh, basically 35 years ago when this was made. So there you go. Might be even older than that. Let's see, 75, you got 85, 95, 105, 115, 45 years ago. Okay. Yeah, I can't add. So this thing's 45 years old, so it's an old fart, basically, even though it's new. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, set this up to see what we can get. Oh, let get the rings. Put all this stuff back in here. Got the instruction sheet and all kinds of stuff there. Okay, now if that doesn't work, I have the bigger piston right here, which is uh, 50 over instead of 40. This is 40, this is 50, so I got a set of either way. This one I only got 40, but I have a whole bunch of 50. That's some other, other brands. 50 seems to be one of my popular sizes. Okay, so. Those are both pistons because they're not necessarily all the same size. Always measure, and then you know for sure what you have. Otherwise, you're guessing. Guessing is bad when it comes to piston clearances. Okay. Okay, this is basically, we are at 12 on the dial. Hmm. About 12 and a half, so this one's slightly bigger. That's normal. Okay, so if I set the boring machine for 10 on my mic or 11, I should be fine. It still leaves me five or six out of the home. Okay. Let's go 
the cylinder is ready to go on the boring bar. First thing I do is file it. Make sure there's no burrs. If anybody watched my video I did the other day, I had that new cylinder I got in from eBay. And it had no casting marks on it. These are casting marks. These are all your code numbers for your foundry and date codes. That's what all this stuff here is all about. These are date codes. This is a date code. This is a mold. This is a J mold. This is a G mold. That's how I call it. A lot of people call these are actually dates. Take your pick. Here's where they have the part number in it, and here is the mark of the foundry that casted it. That's how you tell genuine Harley cylinders. Stuff has stuff like this on it. Now, V-Twin is starting to reproduce cylinders that have markings on them, but not all the way yet. They're starting to cheat you a little bit. Now, the other thing was, my cylinder had no markings on it, so it was like a repop cylinder, except repop cylinders easily have an F and an R on them. These ones over here. Oh, he cut them off, these ones, that's right. He cut them off. They actually had one on there, but he cut it off. I can't show you that. Not on that one, anyway. So, anyway, my cylinders were uh, smooth all the way around, so, you know, even though it was in a Harley box, it might be a repot, but something that's always on a Harley cylinder is they have markings right here. I don't know what these codes are for, but there's more codes. And that cylinder, even though it was smooth on the outside edge, it had that it had an eight cat uh, stamped in here. So that means something. So that's how you know it's an original cylinder because the aftermarket cylinders, like those ones over there, don't have those marks on them. Now somebody could put marks on them, but factory they don't have it. Not too many people could go mark something you can't see on the bike anyway. But anyway, that's one way to tell them stuff. So there you go. A little knowledge can help you, it can also confuse the piss out of you too, so. Okay, this is the bad one, so I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna grab me something I can see. Put the damn felt pin to work. I'm gonna mark these bad spots in here when they're really deep. So I can see in the cylinder here. I look down from the top, I'll see these marks and see if they're bored through or not. See, those are pretty thick ones. Okay, so that's marked up pretty good. Because when I'm boring a cylinder, I bore it from this direction, so I look down in there. If I see any red marks or something down there in the bottom, I know I know we still got a hole 